Hi, I'm Sean Blackwell. Since 2007, my life has been about one thing, healing bipolar disorder. Embedded in those three words lies the adventure of my lifetime. However, even daring to string this phrase together is a highly debatable act for many people. According to psychiatry, bipolar disorder is an incurable mental illness. If you receive that diagnosis, your only option is to take medication for the rest of your life so that you can function in society and avoid relapses which will get you hospitalized. From this perspective, not only is healing bipolar disorder impossible, but even suggesting such a thing may be considered unethical. But if bipolar disorder is an illness, where is the scientific proof? Many psychiatrists will point to decades of research into the genetic roots of mental illness as an indication of its biological origins. Yet, despite talking to hundreds of people online, I haven't met anyone with a medical exam proving the existence of their disorder. Are the symptoms there? Sure. Thinking that you're Jesus here to save the world, grandiose business plans, wild shopping sprees, paranoia, hallucinations, the list goes on. But an actual exam showing the cause of the illness? Never to be found. The truth is that despite billions of dollars being spent in psychiatry's desperate search for the genetic origins of mental disorders, the scientific evidence remains as elusive as Bigfoot. In contrast, many critics of psychiatry in the mad pride psychiatric survivor movement are aware of the lack of scientific validity to psychiatry's claims. As opposed to being signs of a genetic illness, they see supposedly psychotic journeys into non-ordinary states of consciousness as the perfectly natural experiences of someone with a neurodiverse brain structure. From this perspective, if you go into extreme states that are difficult to manage, it only means that your brain is wired a bit differently than the average person. There isn't anything to heal because nothing is inherently wrong with you. The real problem is that we live in a sick society that oppresses people with divergent ways of thinking. In other words, it's society that needs to heal, not you. While this alternative point of view is certainly more empowering, when it comes to the topic of healing, it's not so different than that of psychiatry. Where psychiatry sees a condition that cannot be healed, anti-psychiatry sees nothing in need of healing. So while healing bipolar disorder may sound like a noble cause, the idea of doing so opens up a whole can of worms because how we frame a problem defines our capacity to deal with it. There's a tale from India that captures our current dilemma. One evening, an elderly village woman was crawling around on her knees beneath a lamp post. Witnessing this odd scene, a friendly neighbor approached, confused by her behavior. Ma'am, what are you doing? he asked. I'm looking for my sewing needle, she replied. Okay, let me help you then, he said. For the next few hours, the two of them crawled around on the ground, searching for the elusive needle. Finally, the exhausted man turned to the woman and asked, I don't understand. We've looked all around here and haven't found anything. Where did you first notice that you lost the needle? In the house, she said. In the house? Then why are we spending all this time looking for it out here, he asked. The light's better out here, she replied. This simple joke holds a valuable lesson. When looking for solutions to problems, we often act like the old woman. We search within familiar realms, places where we feel comfortable. What's worse is that we look for answers that feel right, even though they may be wrong or at best incomplete. Sometimes we must go beyond familiar territory when seeking answers to life's biggest challenges. To come up with breakthrough solutions, we must explore parts unknown. That's especially true when it comes to healing bipolar disorder and other mental disorders in general. As I've dedicated my life to this challenge, I believe that a genuine disorder exists, but that it can be healed. However, as with that lost sewing needle, the solution to this problem isn't found under the bright lamppost of scientific materialist thinking. That's why this book is necessary. I've been helping people heal their so-called bipolar disorder since 2013, on my Bipolar Awakenings Healing Retreat. As I've only been able to help one client at a time, the numbers are pretty small. However, the feedback I've received from clients has been encouraging. At this point, I've facilitated over 50 private retreats, working with about 45 clients. Some clients have returned for additional retreats, usually because they've seen progress and want to continue their healing journey. Some of them have been off medication for years, 
and even a few are working in the mental health field. The healing path is quite simple, but rarely easy. Almost every retreat has had its share of humbling challenges. However, at this point, the work has become more straightforward, almost predictable. That's why I wanted to write about it. It's time to share what I've learned. But before we begin, let's start with a reality check. How does a former advertising executive come to write a book about healing bipolar disorder? It's not like I have a PhD after my name, right? As you'll see in the book, that's been more of a blessing than a curse. Bipolar Awakenings, The Quest to Heal Bipolar Disorder is available at Amazon.com.